when I read these words, uh, it, it strikes me because in, in, in the church today, we very rarely hear uh, very many messages at all about the coming of the Lord. It's almost as if it's a forgotten subject. We hear a lot of preaching about how to fix our marriages, how to improve our businesses, how to lose weight the Holy Ghost way. (laughs) Obviously, I haven't been listening to that sermon. (laughs) We hear hear more psychological preaching, but very little Holy Spirit preaching. And we hear very little, if anything at all, about what the old timers used to call the the coming of the Lord. About Jesus. You know, it's one thing to rejoice in our Savior and we thank God for him. And and, and it's one thing to, to talk about the many things and the gifts of the Spirit and all the different subject matters that we could discuss in the Bible. But we hear, as I said earlier, very little, if anything at all right now, about the coming of the Lord. And if ever we needed to hear a message that would remind a generation that has completely lost its mind that there is a day of reckoning that's coming and whether you like it or not, one day you're going to have to stand before Almighty God and give an account for why you lived the way you lived and why you acted the way you acted. And why you turned your back on the grace of God when he tried every way he could to save you from an eternal hell. My God, we need a moving of the Holy Spirit. And I want to take you back, if I can, just for a few moments tonight as, 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 to the scene when this was taking place. Jesus had come into Jerusalem after three and a half years of, of public ministry. And, and it's, it's vital that we understand the, the time that they were living in because the times that they were living in are very, very similar to the times that we find ourselves in now. Judaism, the Jewish religion had grown to, to become an institution of, 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 of religion. And after some 2,000 years, after Moses descended from Mount Sinai and he brought uh, the the, the Ten Commandments to the people and the the Levitical priesthood was set in order and, and the tabernacle would give way to the time of Solomon when he would build the great temple of Almighty God and, 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 and the institutions of how to worship God, the, the thank offerings and the, the burn offerings and, and all the religious form and ritual. Over the years, hundreds and hundreds of years, it became no longer a people who, who had relationship with God, but a people who became accustomed to the ritual of religion. And in the ritual of religion, they lost, if you will, the ability to commune with God spirit to spirit and heart to heart. And if we're not careful, we'll do the very same thing. Our streets are filled with great temples and edifices built to this one we call God. And we go through our ritual and we come to church on Sunday and we, some of us, and we come to church on Wednesday and, and, and we go through the motions. But is it really a religion with you or do you have a relationship with God? Because if you only have a ritual and you don't have a relationship, then in times of crisis in your life, you will have no power to see your way through. But God is desiring to have a relationship with his people. God is desiring to come into our hearts. God is desiring to strip us of all the things that so easily beset us and lift us into a plane of the joy which only heaven can give you. (sighs) 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was born and raised Catholic. Baptized when I was a child. Went to Catholic schools. All my life, I, up until the seventh, eighth grade, I was in Catholic school. I was confirmed by the priest at the age of 12. Had my first communion. I, I, I went through the confessionals. I, I went through all the, the, the form and the trappings. I, I used to pray to Mary. My mother had a beautiful statue of Mary in our house. I remember when I was a little boy. Uh, some of you who are old enough to remember the, the 19... Uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm breathing heavy because I sense his presence in my spirit, and I'm having a hard time getting this out. When I was a child, and I remember, I remember in 1971 in February down in Los Angeles, we had that really, really big earthquake. Do you remember anybody? 1971. And as a child, this will show you what religion will do. As a child, <clears throat> uh, I remember we were told that Mary, you know, we pray to Mary because Mary's, you know, she's cool. She's the mother of Jesus, right? I mean, and Mary will, and not, I'm not trying to put anybody down, but Mary will take care of us. And so we used to have like a shrine in our house, and, and my mother had the uh, our Lady of Guadalupe, I think she was called, and she had her up there, and we had the little red candles, and she always kept a candle burning before her. And then <clears throat> I used to say, well, why do you do that, Mama? And she said, well, we do that so that she'll protect us. Well, then when this earthquake came, I think I was about 10 years old at the time, the earthquake came and devastated everything. Freeways collapsed, the, our backyard, our fence came falling down, and and uh, I remember, I remember thinking, you know, Mary's supposed to protect us, but, but how come if Mary's so strong on top of my dresser, uh, when the earthquake came, she fell down and she broke in half. And I thought to myself, and I didn't know much, I was just a child, so, but if Mary is so strong, mama, why did she fall off the dresser and break in half? Now, I don't make fun of people who, who believe in that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to tell you there is no power in a statue. There is no power in burning your candles. There is no power in any religion. There is no power in any denomination. There's only power in one thing, and that's Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. Mary didn't die for you. Mary didn't shed her blood for you. Jesus did. Jesus did. Jesus did. I know it's not politically correct to say nowadays, but, 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 but Buddha didn't die for you. Hmm? As a matter of fact, tonight you can go to, to Tibet in Asia and you'll find the tomb where they buried Buddha. I love saying this. This is one of my favorite preacher lines. You, you, can, you can find the tomb of Buddha. Come on, somebody. You can go to the Middle East tonight. Hello? And you can find the tomb where they buried Muhammad. Hmm? But you can go to Jerusalem tonight. And you can search anywhere you want to search. But you won't find the tomb of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's not there. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's living God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We serve a resurrected Savior. We serve a living God. He's able to meet your need. And he's coming again. 